Welcome. My name is Joseph McDaniel. I am the summer seminarian here at Christ the Redeemer Parish. During this Easter season, we have walked together with Christ as a parish community, celebrating Christ's risen presence with us, within us, as he opens the scriptures, breaks the bread, and walks with us wherever we are, overcoming any distances, even the physical separation that we have experienced during the pandemic. As we prepare to celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the church at Pentecost, we have prepared this virtual retreat to help us remember the presence of the risen Christ within us and to open ourselves to that inbreathing of the Holy Spirit who always holds us in relationship with the risen Christ and with our loving Father. This retreat will consist of a series of five reflections on moments of encounter with the risen Christ in the scriptures and in our own lives. Each reflection will include a reading from scripture, a video from a series of reflections given on the theme, The Risen Life Within Us by Abbot Jeremy Driscoll of Mount Angel Abbey. Each reflection will also include a time for personal prayer and meditation, accompanied by one or two questions to guide meditation and some spiritual music. We hope that this retreat will be a peaceful and refreshing time for you and for our entire parish community as we celebrate Christ's ongoing presence within us, within the church, and his sending of his spirit of love, the Holy Spirit, at Pentecost. God bless you, and we hope you have a fruitful retreat. Brothers and sisters, as we begin our retreat together, let us take a moment to call to mind that we are always in the presence of our good, our loving, our merciful God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Mary Magdalene stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. 
she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Greeting friends, Easter greetings from Mount Angel, where we are thinking of you. I hope you are feeling the Easter joy. I know that the news is still heavy and hard, and yet Christ, crucified and risen, is with us in these days, pouring out his life into the world, his new life into the world. I know he's invisible. Darn it, we might be inclined to say, but why is the risen Lord invisible? Because He's living his risen life within us. He is the living force, the hidden living force in everything alive. He is the secret life of every person who has ever lived, who is alive now, and whoever will live. Christ is risen. He is our Lord. Here we are in the Easter octave. Do you remember what an octave is? Uh, Catholics have a word for everything. I love that. An octave is eight days of one feast, and the church celebrates a Christmas octave and an Easter octave. That means Christmas Day is not enough. You've got to have eight days of celebrating. Same with Easter. Easter Day is not enough. Easter in the liturgy lasts for eight days. And we're in the middle of that now. I hope these days are a blessing to you. And one of the things you can do if you, if you can't go to church, like most of us can't in these days, the monks are going, but, but every day in the liturgy at Mass, a different gospel account is read uh, of one of the Lord's resurrection appearances, so that through the eight days, every resurrection appearance of the Lord will have been read. Why not do that in your homes? Just find what's read on each day and and see what's there. I was struck by this in Tuesday's Gospel, which tells the story of Mary Magdalene seeing him in the garden, seeing the risen Lord in the garden, but thinking he's the gardener. And then she recognizes him when he says her name, and he says, do not touch me. She's going to embrace him, and he says, do not touch me. And I thought, Wow, that sounds like COVID-19 instructions. Don't touch me. Don't touch surfaces. Don't touch your face. Don't touch. But that's not Jesus's don't touch me. Jesus's don't touch me is to say, hey, it's a whole new realm. It's not like before. It's more. If you touch me as one other one thing, you don't understand resurrection. Resurrection is the Lord's life invading us entirely through the universe. Happy Easter, everybody. The monks of Mount Angel are thinking of you, praying for you. Bless you. At what moments in my life has Christ seemed invisible to me? Why? Where in my life is Christ inviting me to see him today? Oh,
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Easter greetings, dear friends, from Mount Angel. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. I'm speaking to you on Sunday within the octave of Easter, that is, the eighth day of the octave. And I want to talk to you about the gospel that the church has traditionally read on this day. It's the Thomas story, the doubting Thomas story, and there's lots in that for all of us. Uh, you'll remember that in the story, the first part of the gospel takes place uh, on Easter Sunday itself. That night, the apostles are behind locked doors for fear. And we read, And suddenly Jesus came, stood in their midst, and said to them, Peace be with you. Amazing. He doesn't come through the door. He's just suddenly there. This is, this is what it's like when you're risen. This is how you arrive when you're risen. He's there and present to them in their fear, calming them and wishing them peace. I hope something like that happened for you in this week, that in your homes where you're isolated from friends and families because of this COVID-19 thing, that you were able in your prayer to hear Jesus coming to you and saying, peace be with you. But I know some of us, and actually all of us and part of ourselves, are holdouts like Thomas, who's, who, who wasn't there when this happened and, and the other disciples told him about Jesus being alive and present to them. And he said, no, I won't believe it unless I can touch him. And so eight days later, the gospel text says, and that's why we read the gospel on this eighth day of the octave. Eight days later, Jesus came and stood in their midst again and said, peace be with you. And then he addresses the doubting Thomas. He says, Thomas, bring your finger here and put it in my hands. Place your hands in my side. Be not unbelieving, but believing me. And Thomas exclaims, my Lord and my God. This is for us, friends. This is for us in our difficulty of belief that Jesus comes for us offers himself to us for our belief. But he also offers Thomas and all of us a big lesson. He said, 
Blessed are, are those who have not seen and yet believed. That's us, dear friends. We don't see Jesus, but we detect his risen presence. I want to say everywhere, everywhere. Certainly within ourselves, he comes and says, peace be with you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Peace to you from Mount Angel. What are some doubts with which I'm struggling at this moment in my life? What is Jesus saying to me in response to my doubts?
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Hello, dear friends. Peace be with you. Christ is risen. You know, I started doing these videos because of the, the COVID nuisance, the horrible thing, really. I mean, a very serious problem. And so many of us are stuck at home. And here in the monastery, we're closed off to your being able to come here. And so I just thought, well, I want to start talking to you and tell you that the monks of Mount Angel are thinking of you and praying for you. And we want to share with you from our life. So what do I do? What do I share? I... I just, what's on my mind, and this time, this last week, you know, I had a, a beautiful, strong experience uh, meditating on the scriptures. Uh, it was on Friday, the scriptures for Mass, you know, on Friday of the third week of Easter. Uh, we're reading, uh, uh, on uh, the first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, wonderful story of the ch church's life unfolding in the beginning and then a continuous reading from John's Gospel. Those readings aren't meant to match one another, but they're, they're both worthwhile. And here was something wonderful to see what I, I would say are two of the most important passages of, of the whole New Testament falling together side by side in that liturgy. And they, they're very different worlds of thought, these two New Testament passages, and yet, uh, they give one same truth in a very strong way, and it's a, it's a message that got clearer for me and that I want to share with you. It's this, that Jesus lives his risen life, where? In us. Like, totally in us is where he's risen. And what, how do the scriptures that we read show that? The first one was <clears throat> Saul, later Paul's, conversion on the road to Damascus. You know the story. Uh, he's, on his he's on the way to Damascus to persecute Christians. He doesn't believe in the new way. And a blinding, glorious light hurls him to the ground. And a voice reveals who the light is. This is amazing. The voice reveals himself as, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. What is that? It's the glorious Lord present in his suffering church. The glorious Lord present in us. Present in us now. That was Saul's experience. He becomes Paul. But is it our experience too? Answer is yes, <laughs> because the gospel takes us there. You see, Jesus left us the means in the sacrament of the Eucharist, left us the means for delivering his risen life in us in the Gospel on that day, and you know the passage, is from chapter 6 of John's Gospel. Uh, the one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. 
This is the risen Lord. By means of his flesh and blood in the Eucharist, we are in him and he is in us. And then he goes on to say, and this is, this is a deep mystery. It comes right out of the whole mystery of the Trinity. He says, just as I have life because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me has life because of me. So, look, Jesus, Jesus was pouring out on the cross his entire divine life, pouring it out, not onto the ground, but into us he pours his entire divine life. So, dear friends, happy Easter. Be at peace. Greetings from Mount Angel. How can I nourish my relationship with the risen Lord Jesus who lives in us?
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked him, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who is a prophet mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, He walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. So here I am, dear friends, at Mount Angel, and I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking about you. I'm, I'm praying for you. We all are here at Mount Angel. And I know this thing is hard. Uh, I keep hearing about a lot of suffering, physical suffering of those that have the disease and and are dying, those that have lost loved ones or might, and then lots of financial struggles, and people really suffering because of the isolation. I'm I'm mindful of that, and and it's hard for us too. I mean, I've got my worries. I worry about keeping 50 monks safe, that many seminarians. Lots of worry is on all our minds. And so with that before us, I want to share with you today something that we do in our evening prayer every day in the Easter season here at Mount Angel. There's a wonderful response that we sing. Uh, and And it goes like this. These are the words. The Lord Jesus has indeed been raised and he has appeared to Simon. And we sing that 
over and over a couple times. Uh, at the end of this video, we're, I'm going to let you hear the music. It's beautiful, joyful. But why is that important? W what does that do? You know, like if I've had a hard day, a day with worry and, and hearing about other people's worries, and every evening during the Easter season at Vespers, we're, we're, we're proclaim, proclaiming this text. The Lord Jesus has indeed been raised. He has appeared to Simon. Who can say, well, no, what, why, what's so good about all that? And, and who's Simon? Simon's not me. He hasn't appeared to me. What, why, what is this text? And this is a text that really comes alive if you realize where it comes from in the scriptures. It's part of the very compli complicated, let's say, very complex set of stories that Luke tells in chapter 24 of his gospel. And all these, they're all resurrection stories, and they line up in relationship to each other. Let me just romp through them quickly with you. Uh, the scene opens with, with a number of women coming to the tomb. Three are named, and there's more than that in, in Luke's account. Uh, anyway, they find, find the tomb open, they enter it, and, and two men in dazzling robes say to them, why are you s seeking the living one among the dead? The Lord Jesus has indeed been raised, they say. And so the, the women depart from there and run back to where the apostles and other disciples are gathered and, and say what happened. But no one can believe it. And then we hear, uh, this is the next scene that Luke creates. Then Simon runs to the tomb alone, Simon Peter. And he finds the tomb empty, but nothing. And then the scene shifts again. And it's the Emmaus scene. We all know that one. You know, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And Jesus has risen, Lord, is with them, but they don't recognize him. And he, he has a long extended conversation with them about the scriptures, showing that the Messiah had to suffer so to enter into glory. And then, you know, the climax of that story, wonderful. He goes in and sits at table with them and they recognize him in the breaking of the bread and he, thereupon he vanishes from their sight. That's the, that's the scene. And then the next scene is these guys are running back to Jerusalem to tell what happened. But when they get to Jerusalem to tell what happened, the other people that are in the group that they've left, who simply have heard what the women said, that they said he's been raised, but no one saw him. Simon goes to the tomb and no one has, and Simon doesn't see him. And so these guys got the good story to tell, except that when they get there, before they can tell their story, all the people in the room say, the Lord Jesus has indeed been raised. He has appeared to Simon. So let's just pause on that word indeed. The Lord Jesus has indeed been raised. That means because we didn't think he had. But no, he has. And how do we know? Because he appeared to Simon. And if he appeared to Simon, then it belongs to us all. And and then the, t the two guys from Emmaus, they get to tell their story. And that's the next scene. But when they're telling their story, the Lord Jesus appears to the whole lot of them and says, peace be with you. So with this just, with this just one line, uh, the Lord Jesus has indeed been raised. He has appeared to Simon. The whole faith of the church is summarized. And, and so that, and all those stories are supposed to come to mind as you're singing it. And they do. So I want to give this to you. I want you to hear it and pray it. Uh, just that's all you need in this season. And, and, you, and you say it when you're doubting. You say it when you're suffering. That's when you pray it. You wonder, what is this all for? What's it all about? And, and, and it doesn't seem very good for any of us. And what is God's answer in the midst of that? What does God give us? This. The Lord Jesus has indeed been raised. He has appeared to Simon. Listen to the monks singing it. Every day for 40 days up to Ascension, we sing it here at Mount Angel. And we're praying it with you and for you.
Hello, dear friends, dear friends in Christ. Greetings again from Mount Angel, where the monks remember you and are praying for you. I've checked in with you regularly through, in the, through these days of the Easter season, and it's hard to believe that we're 40 days into it now. 40 days means we've reached the Feast of the Ascension. And Ascension is a wonderful feast. Let me just offer you a few ideas about it. This is, this is when the Lord, who is, who is risen and who, who has passed time with his disciples, uh, when he, in fact, now is taken into heaven. What's that mean, though, taken into heaven? Has he gone somewhere else? No. He's vanished from our sight. He's vanished from our sight so that he can have a, a more pervasive interior presence and so that the Holy Spirit can be given to us. We say ascended into heaven. We say seated at, right, at God's right hand. That doesn't mean he's literally that he's sitting somewhere for all eternity. It, this is language with which we say Jesus is totally where God is and is reigning together with his Father and with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is totally where God is. That's what ascension means. But Jesus, who has our human nature and who suffered our human death, he is risen and is totally where God is. And we are in him. That's what it means to be a Christian. I want to read to you a passage that I love from chapter 3 of St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. It's marked me all my life. And I share it with you now as, a, as an ascension gift. St. Paul says, If you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. There you see it. Christ, seated at the right hand of God. Christ above. But Paul is addressing us. He says, If you have been raised with Christ. And have I? Yes, that's what, that's what baptism means. That's the new life we have in Christ. We are in his resurrection life. So Paul is reminding us, if that's so, and it is, then seek things above. That is, seek Christ where he is. And, and it con uh, the text continues, set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on earth. You see, this whole thrust of, of the Christian's being is, is not simply here in, in this life, but we have, we have a, 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 a further life, a bigger life, an eternal life, already established for us with Christ in God. And uh, in the next verse, Paul says, For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. What does that mean, for you have died? I haven't died here, I am. But, no. Uh, in baptism, we die to the old life. We die to sin, and we begin, we, literally, we begin to live Christ's risen life. That's what a Christian is, somebody who lives and has communion in Christ's risen life. And, and Christ is, is taken from our sight, and we can say, and so our being in Christ also isn't visible. But St. Paul is calling that hidden with Christ in God. So that we are in Christ, you don't see it right now. It's hidden, but it's a total reality. So that's where our mind should be, St. Paul is saying. But here's how it finishes. Uh, your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. That's huge. That's amazing. When Christ, who is our life, that's, that's the life that I have. When he appears, this is his coming in glory on the last day, what will that uh, appearance entail? It will entail us with him, as part of him, as the Christ reality, as the whole Christ. We will appear with him in glory. So that's what ascension is about, dear friends. You know, here in the monastery, there's a monastic practice that when an abbot is elected, uh, he chooses a, a, a motto that, by which he can indicate to the monks uh, what is really going to be key to his way of being abbot with them. 
And when I became the abbot of an angel four years ago, this, this passage came to mind. And I told the monks, that's my motto, seek things above. With all that that implies, seek things above because you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. Seek things above so that when Christ appears in glory, we will appear with him. Bless you all, dear friends. Bless you. What are the things after which I usually seek, upon which I usually set my mind? Where is God asking me to seek things above in my life today? As we conclude our time together on this retreat, we thank God for the opportunity to spend this time with Him, to spend this time with each other in prayer, reflecting on the mystery of Christ's risen life within us. As we go forward from this retreat, as we prepare to celebrate God's sending of His Holy Spirit upon us, upon His Church, at Pentecost, we ask the Holy Spirit to come down upon us, to remain with us always, to keep us in loving relationship with the risen Christ. And so, let us ask that Spirit to come now upon us as we pray together.
Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that, by the same Holy Spirit, we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for spending this time with us. God bless you, and have a blessed celebration of Pentecost.